Good morning, everyone. Jennifer LeClaire here with you. This is Mornings with the Holy Spirit, listening daily to the still, small voice of God. I'm Jennifer LeClaire. I'm the founder of the Awakening House of Prayer Global Movement. We have churches, houses of prayer, and prayer hubs in over 20 nations in the earth. But our headquarters, our church, our house of prayer, our home base, our global epicenter is here in Fort Lauderdale. We have church on Sundays in Fort Lauderdale. 10.47 10.47 a.m. and 1.30 p.m. Come to one of our services. I promise you, you'll be refreshed. You'll feel the Holy Spirit's presence when you walk in the door. And you'll be greeted with hospitality of people who really love you and want to have you there. Amen. I want to meet you in person. Come on over. 10.47 a.m., 1.30 p.m., Fort Lauderdale, Awakening House of Prayer. I'll see you on Sunday. Amen. Two different messages, two different worship teams, two different encounters. And God is good. Awakening Prayer Hubs, awakeningprayerhubs.com. Go find out about this prayer movement. God is adding to the prayer movement almost daily. I mean, he's bringing in new prayer hub leaders from the nations of the earth. Spain, Trinidad, Portugal, all over the United States, Canada, South America, Australia, New Zealand. God is doing something special because he wants to see an awakening in your city, in your nation. He wants to see that revival that transformed lives and see souls saved. That is on his heart. He put it on my heart. Is it on your heart? If it is, would you please go check it out? Find a hub in your city or start a hub at awakeningprayerhubs.com. Learn more about that. We may talk about that later right now. I want to remind you of one more thing as we enter into prayer, the Ignite Network. I want to multiply my spiritual family. You know, Paul said to Timothy to teach those who can teach others to replicate yourself. We're supposed to be replicators, multipliers, right? Disciple makers. And I want you to join my prophetic family and let me disciple you in the prophetic ignitenow.org, I-G-N-I-T-E dot org, ignitenow.org is my prophetic family. It can be yours too. Learn, grow in a safe environment, no Jezebels, no judgment, prayer support, dream interpretation, safety, safety. Don't go in these goofy Facebook groups with all these weirdos chiming in on what your dream is. Don't share your dreams and your words in those groups to get the wrong feedback and backlash and criticism and wrong interpretations that lead you astray. Let me help you ignite now.org. Amen. God is good. Today's devotion is titled, let me carry your war burdens. I'm reading from victory decrees, daily prophetic strategies for spiritual warfare, victory, daily prophetic strategies, daily, daily, daily. We need a strategy for every day. Today's devotion is titled, Let Me Carry Your War Burdens. And here's what I heard the Lord say. Your load will be a little lighter if you let me take it off your shoulders. I can carry your burdens and carry you too. Let me help you in this battle, says the Lord. You'll begin to walk a little faster without those heavy weights. Then you'll begin to run again and see the progress that you have been hoping to see. The progress that you've been frustrated that you haven't seen. You'll be stronger to fight the wars that I've called you to fight. If you'll lean into my grace and my wisdom, says the Lord, you don't have to go it alone. Remember, I am a very present help in time of need, says the Lord. That's a good word. Let me carry your war burdens. My, my, my. Matthew eleven twenty eight, Hebrews 12, 1. Psalm 46, verse 1 are the scripture references for today. Now the prayer starter and the decree, Father, remove the heavy weights of oppression. The enemy has fastened around my feet so I can run to the battle line with confidence and overcome the wicked one. I decree the wisdom of God confounds every foe that stands against his will for my life. I declare my helper stands by me in every battle I'm called to fight. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Father, we praise you this morning. We thank you. You are an awesome God. There is no other God like you, your matchless, incomparable, immutable, Emmanuel, God with us. We lift up your name today. 
We lift up your name, the name of Jesus, the name above every other name that could ever be named. Oh God, would you give us a revelation this morning of the power in that name, how we take it for granted. Oh, if we could just have a, a, a deeper, a wider understanding, revelation of the power in your name. My God, it's not just a magic word that we tack on the end of our prayers. It's at this knee that every, at this name that every knee should bow and at this name. I think, oh gosh, I have a picture. When you say the name of Jesus, demons actually bow down. When you pray in the name of Jesus, when you do warfare in the name of Jesus, I want you to just see this with your holy imagination. Demons actually bow down to the Christ in you. And then they flee. Father, we thank you this morning for your name, for the name of Jesus, the name above every name. The name at which every knee must bow, every tongue must confess that you are the Christ, the son of the living God, the all-powerful, almighty, glorious warrior God. That is who we serve. We're so grateful. We bow to you this morning. We bow to you. We bow a knee to you this morning, God. We bow down to you this morning, God, because you are worthy of our adoration. You are worthy of our worship. You are worthy of our allegiance. You're worthy of our surrender. You are good. Your will for our lives is good. And we know the enemy is roaming around like a roaring lion seeking someone to devour. We know the enemy is resisting your will for our life, but we're going to resist long and resist strong. We're going to resist the enemy that's resisting us. We're not going to bow down to the temptation to give up. We're not going to bow down to the temptation to give in. We're not going to throw in the towel. We're not going to quit. We're not going to pull back. We're not going to shrink back. We're not going to draw back. We're going to run to the battle line cloaked in the anointing of Jesus Christ. The yoke breaking, bondage removing anointing of Jesus Christ. We are going to run forth with confidence. We're not going to limp. We're not going to crawl. We're not going to have a, a hesitancy as we move forward, but you're going to put a pep in our step. You're going to put some Holy Ghost momentum at our back, God, as we go forth executing your will in this earth, your will for our lives. You are with us. Every step that we take, you are with us. You've gone before us to make a way for us, and you are our rear guard. You've surrounded us with favor, like a shield. Come on, what about that firewall? The Lord reminded me yesterday about the firewall. Come on, he's, he's got a firewall around us. When we fear the Lord, when we walk in the spirit of the fear of the Lord, when we reverence the Lord, when we acknowledge him in all of our ways, when we surrender to him and yield to him and press into him and wait on him, when we do these things, not only do the angels encamp around us, oh, that would be enough. Not only do the angels camp around us, but we've got a firewall because when we're hidden in Christ, it hits in Rosha. When we press into his presence, the secret place of the Most High, we have entered into the reality of God as all consuming fire. I said, when we hide ourselves under the shadow of his wings, we have entered into the reality of God as an all-consuming fire. That means we've got a firewall around us. Oh, shadabasha. We've got a firewall around us. And when the enemy tries to come near us, the firewall prevents him. When he tries to piquetable, when he tries to penetrate the firewall, his plans are burned up. His propositions are burned up. His weapons are burned up. When the enemy tries to penetrate the firewall, oh, his strategies are burned up. His lies are burned up. Come on. Father, we thank you that you surrounded us with favor as a shield. We thank you that you surrounded us with
with angels to protect and guard us. We thank you that you've surrounded us with a firewall. We are surrounded. Sometimes, God, we feel like the enemy has surrounded us. Sometimes, God, we feel like there's nowhere to run. Sometimes, God, we feel like there's no escape. Sometimes, God, we feel like we don't know which way to turn. The enemy has courted us. The enemy has surrounded us. Oh, but the greater reality, the greater truth, the greater joy is knowing <laughs> that the enemy is the one who is surrounded. Come on. God has surrounded us with favor like a shield. God has surrounded us with angel powers. God has surrounded us with a firewall. And we are surrounding the enemy. One can put a thousand to flight, and two can put a uh, ten thousand to flight, and three can put a hundred thousand to flight. I don't know how many four can put to flight because I'm not great at math, but I know it's a whole lot. So today, today we're putting our firewalls together. Today we're locking shields together. Today we're going forward together, marching in sync with the opinions of the Holy Ghost. Today, we're joining forces together. I'm joining with you, and you're joining with me. And, 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 and Melanie Byrne is joining with Gillian Huggins, and Gillian Huggins is joining with Loretta Huff, and Loretta Huff is joining with Libby Lorente, and Barbara McFarland, and Katerina Wasner. And today, we are walking shields, we are joining forces, and we are going for a corporate victory. You hear the words coming out of my mouth. I said, we are pressing in to a corporate victory. I said, it's not just about me. It's not just about you. It's not just about your neighbor. It's not just about Sweden. It's not just about Germany. It's not just about France. It's not just about England. It's not just about Australia. It's not just about Norway. It's not just about Canada. It's not just about the States. It's not just about New Zealand. It's not just about Mexico. It's about all of us today. We're pressing in for a corporate victory. We're going to surround the enemy. I said, we're going to surround the enemy. I said, we're going to surround the enemy. Come on. If we lock shields and we press in, I just saw a picture. I just saw a picture of a vast army in waves and in, in ripples. I, I don't know how to start with it. In lines, but instead of that, oh, listen. If you watch these, these military shows, they uh, they advanced in lines, lines. It was a line, one line, the front line, and the next line, and the next line, and the next line, and the next line. I saw the enemy force that are us, we. Our, our forces in circles, concentric circles. And we were in lines, but the lines formed circles. Do you understand what I'm saying? Almost like a bullseye, like a, like a dartboard. And there's circles, circles, circles. So instead of going, instead of going toward the enemy as a straight line, straight line, straight line, straight line, I'm trying the best I can to describe what I'm seeing. Instead of going toward the enemy, straight line, with one line, one line, one line, back, 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 back. We're circling the enemy. We're circling the enemy. And the red zone is where the enemy is, right in the middle. And we've got the enemy surrounded. And I want you to believe this. Will you believe right now what's happening in the spirit? Will you believe it? If you cannot believe the words coming out of my mouth, I want you to pray in the Holy Spirit. Don't allow doubt to come into your heart. It's okay if doubt is in your mind, but don't let the doubt hit your heart because it's with your heart that you believe, not with your mind. It's with your mind you understand, but it's with your heart that you believe. I saw a vision and circle upon circle upon circle upon circle together as we lock shields, we're surrounding the enemy. And guess what? He's not getting away this time. I said, the enemy is not getting away this time. I said, the enemy is not escaping this time. You know what God told the Israelites several times in scripture? He told it to Joshua. He told it to King Saul. He said, do not let one get away. Do not let one get away. Destroy, utterly destroy all of your enemies. Do not let one get away. Do you understand me? Do not let one get away. Too often we pull back from spiritual warfare before we have the ultimate victory. We have a taste. We have a measure of victory. We, we broke through one enemy battle line, but we stopped short of the full victory. We stopped short of the full breakthrough. We let some of the enemies get away. We go in for the kill. We go in for the battle. We feel like, oh, wow, the warfare stopped. I won. Oh, wow. 
The attacks ended. I won. Well, you dealt with the one demon, but you didn't deal with all the demons because many times demons tag team against you. They tag team. They tag team. They tag team. When you punch one real hard, sometimes the others will back up for a minute to make you think the war's over so they can come back in for the kill. Are you understanding the words coming out of my mouth? I'm trying to help you. Do not let one get away. Do not continue, or rather, do not withdraw from the battle line until every enemy is defeated. You may think because the attack stopped, because the attack ceased, because everything seems calm. And then you know what happens a week or two later, here comes another attack, you know why? You know why another attack came so soon? Because the first attack was never over, but you stopped short of complete victory. You let one get away or two get away. God told the Israelites, do not let one get away, utterly destroy all of them. So Father, I thank you for a spirit of unity on this broadcast. We're gonna fight as one man today. We're gonna fight as one man today. We're gonna put all of our warfare in the center of the circle that I see in the spirit. We're gonna put all of the warfare right there in that hot zone, in that bullseye. We're putting all the aches and pains in that bullseye. We're putting all the, 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 the marriage problems, the strife that's attacking in that bullseye. We're, we're putting all of the, of the, the strategies of the enemy to keep our prodigals away from you, God. We're putting all that in that bullseye. We're putting all the disease in the bullseye. We're putting all the oppression in the bullseye. We're putting all the witchcraft in the bullseye. Are you following me? The bullseye is the place where we're going to attack. We're going to be like sharpshooters in the spirit. We're going to hit our mark today, collectively. You might not have a disease, but somebody else on this broadcast does. You might not have marriage problems, but somebody else on this broadcast does. You might not have financial problems, but somebody else on this broadcast does. And we're putting all of this demonic squirrel, we're putting it in the bullseye. Do you understand? We're going to attack it as one man. One can put a thousand to flight, two can put ten thousand to flight, three can put a hundred thousand to flight, four can put a million to flight. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for the spirit of unity. And I thank you for the power in your name. I thank you, Lord, that you've given us authority over the enemy. We repent right now. If we have done anything to allow the enemy to gain inroads into our lives. We repent right now for anything that we have done. We repent right now for, for not dealing with the attack fully and completely, for not sensing by your spirit that the war wasn't over. We felt a temporary relief and we thought the battle was over. We thought the breakthrough was complete and, and, and it wasn't. And so we repent for stopping short of full victory, for allowing them to get away, these enemies, these attacks, these weapons. We ask you, Father, in the name of Jesus, to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Now listen, you always repent before you go into warfare. I'm teaching you. Maybe, maybe you haven't taken my school of spiritual warfare, so I'm, I want to help you out. So, Father, we thank you that you cleanse us from unrighteousness. Now, we take authority right now in Jesus' name. We take authority over all the works of the enemy. Father, it is written that Jesus came. He was anointed the Holy Ghost, going about doing good and healing all who were oppressed of the enemy. It is written that Jesus came to destroy the works of darkness. And so, Father, we thank you that we are Christ's agents on the earth, ambassadors of God, ministers of reconciliation. And we take authority over the works of darkness and we throw them in the fire. We take authority over sickness and disease in Jesus' name, and we throw it in the fire. We take authority over strife, adultery, fortification that has infiltrated in marriages, these spirits of perversion and lust, and we throw it in the fire in Jesus' name. We take authority over every spirit of deception and the spirit of the world, the spirit of apathy, the spirit of lukewarmness that has attacked the prodigals, and we throw it in the fire in Jesus' name. We take authority over every spirit of poverty, all debt, unfair financial injustices, 
and we throw it in the fire in Jesus' name. We take authority over every enemy assignment. And we will no longer bow, but we have joined forces as one man. We have joined forces together. We have locked shields together. And we thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus, that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. But every tongue that rises against us shall be condemned. Every assignment that rises up against us shall be dismantled. Every attack that rises up against us shall be thwarted in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord, that you have given us the victory. You died on the cross, and when you did, you spoiled the principalities of power, openly triumphing over them, putting them to shame. So I thank you, Lord, that we are not the ones who are walking in shame, but the demon powers who would dare defy the living God. They are the ones that have already been put to shame. Lord, remind them of their shame. And help us, Lord, to walk with our heads held high, to walk with the posture of victory, to walk knowing that the victory belongs to you and you want it. And we're enforcing the victory with the words of our mouth. We do warfare with the words of our mouth. And we will speak forth your will. No longer will we complain about what's wrong, but we will prophesy what is right. We will confess what Jesus is saying about our health. We will confess what Jesus is. Jesus is the high priest of our confession. We will say the same thing Jesus has said. He's watching over our words to perform them. His words in our mouth, he's watching over. His words released out of our mouth, he's watching over them. He's sending angel of reinforcements. No longer will we say, I don't know why my prodigal won't come home. We, we will confess their return. No longer will we confess my marriage is falling apart, but we will confess God is restoring my marriage. Reconciliation is on the horizon. No longer will we confess the disease, the malady, the ailment, the pain, but we will confess by his stripes, he is healed. We do, we, we are healed. We do war with the words of our mouth. Huh. You ever thought about that? We do war with the words of our mouth. So fa Father, help us to speak your words over our life. Because we punched the devil in the eye this morning, but we know he's going to try to put pressure on our tongue to say things that we ought not say that would give him a right to come back to the place of influence in our circumstances. We pushed back darkness this morning, but we know that the enemy is going to press our buttons trying to get us to open our mouths and speak forth his plan to get an agreement with his will over God's will. It's so subtle. Father, help us to stop falling for the enemy's tricks. Help us to just keep our mouth shut if we can't praise you. Help us, Lord, let our tongues cleave to the roof of our mouth if we can't release words of life over our life. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Let's keep praying. I want to really encourage you because many of you are so battle weary. And I felt that when I got on the broadcast, some of you are in physical pain. Some of you are in emotional pain, financial pain. And sometimes when life gets really busy and we get overwhelmed and there's so much coming at us at once. And sometimes we forget to drink deeply from God's well. Sometimes we forget, you know, the Bible says, Jesus said, if you hunger and thirst after righteousness, you will be filled. If you hunger and thirst after righteousness, you will be filled. That's what the Bible says. Sometimes we forget to drink. Sometimes we forget to drink. And I want to read you a scripture. Isaiah 12, verse 3. Isaiah 12, verse 3. With joy, you will drink deeply from the fountain of salvation. <laughs> With joy, you will drink deeply from the fountain of salvation. You will joyously draw water from the springs of salvation. See, the enemy comes in, tries to muddy our water sometimes, tries to infiltrate our well. You will joyfully draw water from the springs of salvation. With great joy, you people will get water from the well of victory. When you're going to the battle line, before you go into battle, remember your, your salvation. Remember what your salvation affords you. Remember the benefits Remember your authority. 
Remember the moment that God translated you out of darkness into the kingdom of light? Whatever it is you're battling, you remember the joy of your salvation? David cried out, restore to me the joy of my salvation. That needs to be some of your cries. You're, you're not drinking from that well. You're not drawing from that well. When we get weary, sometimes we're just too tired to pump the well. What does that mean? Sometimes we're too tired to get in the word. Sometimes we're too tired to turn on an edifying broadcast like this one. Sometimes we're just too tired. We're too weary. We don't even want to hear it anymore because we've heard it all before and it's not working and it's just too bad. And I don't know. Ah. Joyfully, you will draw. Listen, the NET Bible says, joyfully, you will draw water from the springs of deliverance. Why is it translated so many ways? Because salvation includes victory and salvation includes deliverance and salvation gives you the right to joy unspeakable and full of glory salvation. So father, help us today to drink deep from the wells of salvation. Help us Lord to drink deep. We don't want to wait until we're so dehydrated spiritually to come back and drink from the wells of salvation. We don't want to wait until we're absolutely just dried up to draw and drink from the wells of deliverance. We don't want to wait until we feel so defeated. We almost just want to give up. We're just tired of life. We don't want to keep going. We don't want to wait until we get to that point to get water from the wells of victory. We don't want to wait until we're so oppressed. We can barely get out of bed. So depressed and oppressed and fearful and discouraged before we draw water from the springs of deliverance. Father, you've given us an open invitation with joy, happily, expectedly, draw water from the wells of salvation. Draw water from the springs of salvation. Jesus said, if you knew the gift of God who was asking you for a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. So Father, we're asking you for a refreshing. We're asking you for the living water. We're asking you. You said, if anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. Father, we're thirsty. We're out of breath. We're parched. Come on, you ever go jogging? You ever run? I just lost some of you right there. When you go running or when you exercise vigorously, you're depleting your natural resources. What happens? You get thirsty. You want something to drink. That's how some of you are in spiritual warfare. I'm telling you, you're fighting so hard. You're exerting so much spiritual energy. You're just trying everything you can just to stand. Some of you, the battle has been so long. The battle has been just worn you out. It's been years and years and years and you haven't seen victory. You've had all these prophetic words and you haven't seen victory. That's when you've got to get to the well of salvation and drink deep. Come on, hashtag drink deep. Father, give us the living water and help us to rejoice in our salvation. Lord, open rivers on the barren heights and fountains in the middle of the valleys. Turn the desert into a pool of water and the dry land into flowing springs. God, would you help us today to pursue your presence, the refreshing that you offer, to meditate on the word of God, the benefits of our salvation, the victory that you died to give us. Help us, Lord, we want to drink deep. We need to drink deep. We need the living water. We need to, the, to, to see the living water flow from us to other people who are hungry and thirsty. But when we're dried up, the streams aren't flowing. So we need the living water. We need the new drink. We need the flowing springs. We need the flowing river. Father, help us today to draw water from the wells of salvation. To draw waters with joy out of the Savior's fountains, the fountains of Christ. All of our fountains are in you, as the song goes. We're going to drink deep. Somebody just needs to take a deep breath today. I know you don't have anything to drink. If You don't, you don't want to gulp your coffee. <laughs> but some of you just need to drink. Just take a deep breath. <sighs> it's going to be okay. Whatever you're dealing with, whatever you're going through. It's going to be okay. Just take a deep breath. Just take a deep breath.
David said, for with you is the fountain of life. And in your light, we shall see light. I know some of you are going through dark times. This is a dark time in the earth. This is one of the darkest times in modern history. Right now, we're living through it. You know what? It could be worse, and it's going to get better. I said, we're in one of the darkest times in modern history right now. Probably one of the darkest times in most of our lifetimes. If we didn't live through the Great Depression and the Great Recession in 2008, well, that was very difficult and even devastating for some, but it's not like this, what we're living through now. But guess what? God is still on the throne. God is still on the throne. He saw all this coming. There is a light in Goshen. He still provides for his people. He protects us. He has a plan for us. And when the enemy gets in, he promises to work it out. What God, what the enemy meant for harm, God will work for good. I'm not saying there's not tragedy in life. I'm not saying that bad things don't happen to good people. What I'm saying is God is still good. And even in one of the darkest periods in modern history, our salvation is still secure. Nothing has changed in heaven. The economy hasn't changed in heaven. The healing power is still flowing from heaven. Kairos moments, divine connections. All these things are still happening for the people who believe in God. Jesus is the light of the world. And Isaiah prophesied there will be gross darkness, but great glory at the same time. And while we look and we see great uh, gross darkness, come on, we see gross darkness everywhere. Even the body of Christ is divided. We see gross darkness everywhere, but guess what I'm choosing to do? What I'd like you to choose to do? Drink deep and walk in the glory. You don't have to walk in the darkness, beloved. You've been delivered from darkness. You have been delivered from darkness. You have been delivered from darkness. You don't have to walk in gross darkness. You walk in the light. You walk in the glory. So Father, help us drink deep and walk in the light and walk in the glory. We reject the darkness. We reject the doom and we reject the gloom because you're not a doomy gloomy God. You're a glorious warrior God. And you gave us victory over death, hell, and the grave. You've got the keys. And we're going to live for you forever. So whatever's happening in this moment of time, as horrible as it is and as sad as it is to see so many lives lost and families ripped apart by political issues and all the social injustice, the, the horrifying realities that we're facing in the earth. I mean, the list goes on and on. It's one thing, then it's another, then it's another. Father, we thank you for opening our eyes to your goodness and your glory. We would not be mesmerized or paralyzed or hypnotized by the darkness, but that we will be mesmerized by your glory, by your light, and by your love. Let your faith be the anchor of our soul because you are good and our hope and our faith, it rests in you, not in a medical cure, not in a politician, not in a culture warrior, but our faith and our trust and our hope, it rests in you. It always has and it always will. And if it doesn't, show us so that we can make an adjustment because you are our only good. You are our only hope so many wrong things in the world. There's so many things that could discourage our hearts, but we choose to believe you. We choose to believe in the goodness of the Lord and the land of the living, and we will not faint, and we will not grow weary in well-doing. Even in the face of tragedy, it's horrifying some of the things that I know some of you are facing, and I face horrifying things in my life, and I think we all have, and it's all relative, and but guess what? We're all relatives in Christ and God is good and he wants us to stay in unity and love one another. Jesus said, all men will know that you are my disciples by the love that you share, that you have, that you display to one another. So Father, help us to walk in love because faith works by love. Help us to walk in faith because we prophesy, and we move in your gifts according to the proportion of our faith. 
We want to demonstrate to the world that Jesus is alive. We don't want to act just like they act. We want to walk at a higher plane and demonstrate goodness and hope and joy and love to a lost and dying world. Those who don't yet know you, Lord, we don't want to be a divided church, bickering and fighting and acting sometimes even worse than the world over things that we can't control and you already saw. Help us to put aside our biases, our hurts, our pains, our disappointments. Help us to set aside the malice and the corrupt communication and all of the things that don't forward your gospel in the earth because it's all about the advancement of your gospel. You left us here to know you and to make you known. Father, we got, we've got to get back to being about our father's business. We don't have any more time. You said the days are coming when it's going to be too dark to work. Jesus said, I got to work while it's light. Paul said, redeem the time because the days are evil. So father, make us one, even as you are one with the father, make us one, even as you are one with the father, you with the father, the Holy spirit, you are one, make us one. Help us to lay aside our differences, the petty arguments over inconsequential matters. I mean, yeah, it seems to matter right now, but does it matter more than the lives of those who are going to hell? No, we make so much out of so little sometimes mountains out of molehills. God, forgive us for not making the main thing, the main thing. And that is the preaching of your gospel. Your word says of the increase of Christ's government and of peace, there shall be no end. Help us to be about your business of advancing the gospel, of being the salt and the light that make unbelievers hungry, releasing the gifts of the spirit that prove Jesus is alive. Help us to stop getting so entangled with the things of the world that we're no spiritually good anymore. Teach us your ways and show us your paths and strengthen us for the days ahead. We know that you'll never leave us or forsake us and you will not fail us ever. Your word is true. You're not a man that you should lie or the son of man that you should repent, you will do what you said you'll do. And you'll do it right on time. And despite the enemy's plans and the interruptions and the disappointments and the hopelessness and the depression and the death and the worry, and you are still on the throne. And we will choose to believe you. We will choose by force of our will to believe you over every other voice in the earth. Your word is tried by fire seven times. It's the only truth that we can completely depend on always and forever. You are the one true living God. You are the way, the truth, and the life. So infuse us with your life day and help us. Teach us. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, that was a long post-show prayer. Amen. I said, you turn those concerns into prayer requests and you can make a difference. Amen. God is good. I wish you guys would get on my mailing list. Please get on the mailing list in case anything ever goes awry with social media. And stay on the mailing list. You can do that at jenniferleclair.org or you can text the word prophet, P-R-O-P-H-E-T to 555-888. Amen. Guys, if you're in Fort Lauderdale, I'd love to see you at Awakening House of Prayer. And pray for me so I can lead with wisdom and grace and honor. Keep me in your prayers, would you? Go to PrayForJennifer.com. Sign up to be part of my prayer army if you feel like it. Amen. You know what you could do that would make a big difference? Join the Awakening Prayer Hubs movement. Awakening Prayer Hubs. AwakeningPrayerHubs.com. It's a prayer movement endorsed by... Lou Engel, Cindy Jacobs, Bishop Bill Hammond, Mike Bickle, Patricia King, James Gall, Alveda King, Dick Eastman, Becca Greenwood, Dr. Michael Brown, and the list goes on. God is good. Go over there to awakeningprayerhubs.com, guys, and check that out. I got to go. I love you. Have a great day.